All right, so welcome to Photoshop. So today I'm gonna to show you how to create dynamic contrast so we can bring out the clouds in a silhouette type image like this. So first thing I'm gonna do is just go ahead and convert this to black and white. And so we can come in here to our sliders and move these around. That's getting rid of too much highlight there. Yellow's gonna do the same thing so it's kind of blowing out my highlights. So I'm basically going to leave them. Where you can kind of pick up some contrast is down here in the blues. So if notice if I go to the left, I can increase sort of that contrast and get more definition out of the clouds. We'll just say that's good. I'm not going to sit here and fool around with it too much. So we're going to go up here into our layers and I will make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. So uh, we've got this. We can go ahead and just flatten this image down for right now because I've kind of got this where I want. So it's black and white. Um, everything's ready to go. I'm going to hit Command J twice. So I will label this so you know. So color and dynamic contrast. We're eventually going to throw this away, but use this. So first thing you're going to do is go ahead and turn off your dynamic contrast layer and go ahead and select the color. So if anybody has done frequency separation, that is the process that we're doing right now. So we're going to go down to blur, down to Gaussian blur, and I'm just going to blur this image at about four. I think that's going to be good enough. And we'll uh, say that's okay. Um, the blur is not super important on this image because we're not really dealing with color. We're just interested in getting the dynamic contrast layer out. So that looks pretty good. So we're going to go back and turn on dynamic contrast and select it. And we're going to go up to image and down to apply image. And in these settings, we are going to change the layer to the color layer or the layer that you blurred and you're going to change blending to subtract and I already have mine set and ready to go so notice the scale is 2 and offset is 128 that's important so what you should get is this weird looking gray thing something that's very similar and you could do this as a high pass filter as well I just like uh, the frequency separation a little bit better than high pass so we will hit OK and then we're going to change this blending mode to linear light. And there we go. So next thing I'm going to do is take this color layer and I'm just going to throw it away because we don't need it anymore. And now I'm going to take the dynamic contrast and turn it off and turn it on. Turn it off and turn it on. And you can really see, I'll zoom in here a little bit, how it will really increase your contrast but as well as sort of almost sharpen so see how it's out of focus and then we're bringing it into focus out of focus into focus we're really getting some crisp detail into that image um, you can also lower this if you wanted less of that effect or increase it and if you want even more you can just hit command J command J command J and you can duplicate this as many times and you're just gonna keep increasing the amount of dynamic contrast that you have in that image so like let's say these two look good I can go ahead we'll throw these away so one wasn't enough I can put two together um, if you select both using shift click and hit command E it will just turn that into one layer um, and then we will go ahead and choose back to linear light so there's our dynamic contrast with two and now I can just go ahead and lower it and I think that looks pretty good so that was the original and that's that so if you're ever trying to tr uh, increase your dynamic contrast in your image using frequency separation is a great way to do it have any comments or questions you can leave those below um, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe